Previously on Plotty Time. It's like, I want that guy dead, but sexily. Oh, you have to get there by aircraft carrier. There's no possible other way. It's the only one high enough. I feel like you might have fought one in Earthworm Jim. Hey everyone and welcome to Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. To my right we have Sir Chump Slap. He's all over the place, 900 feet up to 1300 feet. What an asshole. <laughs> and on the other side of the table, Dr. Scientist. The democratic vote for me is the right thing to do, Philadelphia. So do. <laughs> and my name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, when I want a wife, I'll buy one. <laughs> Welcome to Potty Time. It does always say That's that. That's Scotch. <laughs> That's what I always say every time. Oh, God. Fucking Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be attentive to my needs. <laughs> At least you can find the place when you're looking for it. Here we are. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Fucking Scrooge. What a great movie. Any hoodles. So welcome back for our second part of the best games from Plotty Time of 2019. Yeah. Best score. Highest scored games we covered in 2019. Highest scoring games we at Plotty Time scored in 2019. Scoring. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Say scoring again. Are you sure we scored them? We scored them our scores out of 81 stars. That's our (laughs) metric we always pick because that's normal. Yeah. And uh, we covered the first three. And for those of you just joining, if you want to skip that first one where we went through five through three, our number five game was what, Dr. Scientist? Infamous. Infamous. And we had a lot of good things to say about that. Sure did. Number four game was what? D- Darksiders. It sure yeah, was. Sure yes. Was. Nailed it. <laughs> the best part about that was your confidence in saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and our number three game was what? It was... I can't read your writing over good, there. Good, because you should know it. We just talked about it. We just it. talked about it. <laughs> I know. We were... We really did. Dead Space. Talk about Dead three. Space, of course. I knew that. We were just <laughs> Dead Space. Seriously. What a game. What thought, a game. I loved it so much. I remember. Well, I mean, we're recording this like six weeks away from the last time we recorded. Oh, yeah. So. I don't think so. Well. Well. How, how, was, your, how was your Easter? <laughs> it was good. It was great. Fourth of July was pretty good. <laughs> hit, hit motherfucking eggs everywhere. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. La- last, uh, last episode, we covered the August to remember. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. Those three were three weeks in a row. Yeah. The first, the eighth, and the 15th. Damn. I mean, we really crushed it in August. I know we said it before, but, yeah. you know. I mean, then we then we finished up August with Brutal Legend of Vanquish, but. <laughs> so we really fucking nailed it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stuck the landing. <laughs> <laughs> Came in hot. Came in hot. So uh, this week, this episode, we're going to go over our number two and number one Scored games out of our metric, which is 81 yes, stars. and they were 66 points and 67 points, respectively. So they were close. It was Ooh. a tough, tough fight to get to that top spot of 2019. It was bloody. It was bloody. A lot of crying. A lot of blood. A lot of people being eaten. A lot of semen. In each game. A lot of semen? A lot of semen. Oh, it was a plotty time episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is there how were we work do. trips involved. <laughs> Lots of work trips. Uh so how about we just go, we'll roll right into it. Yeah. Our number two game. Number of two. Of 2019 is Bioshock. Bioshock. Uh, which actually came out before. 2019, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Crazy. <laughs> it came out in May. Um, we had mentioned that, was it May? We had mentioned that... Uh, Dead Space had come out in 2008. This came out almost a year before that, in August 21st, 2007, which is actually over oh, a year. Let's go back to August. Bring it back to that August. So there's always an August connection. <laughs> but uh, this game, it was released for Xbox 360 as an exclusive. I remember about that. About two years before it was a PlayStation game. Yeah, because I remember I actually played it on PlayStation when you told me I should play it and you let me borrow it. Really? That was the first time I ever heard it, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I remember Sloppy Pickle playing it. When it first came out. Oh, yeah. He was an Xbox guy. Yeah. I remember I got into this game because a uh, friend of the pod, Bad Blood, had got it as a Christmas gift that year. And for Xbox or PlayStation? For Xbox, like the Christmas 2007. The yeah. And it was just like a 
spontaneous family gift. Like going to the store and be like, what's the hot game right now? Oh, really? And so they bought him Bioshock and he's he played like the first half hour, didn't really get into it, just kept playing. And he said it was one of the best games he ever played and I absolutely had to play it. Really? So when it came out for PlayStation, I remember the day I bought it because you were there. Chomp slap? Yeah, probably. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> I was there for most of the major points of your life. Yeah, yeah. And I'm now starting to put together, you might be a ghost. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? Wait, there's a third person? <laughs> yeah, it's just you and me. <laughs> well, I'm weird. We're like Tyler Durden. My, yeah, it's just me screaming in a microphone by myself. <laughs> It's a very avant-garde episode this guy does. <laughs> you probably have more followers at this point. <laughs> you got to hear this wackadoo shit this guy's yelling. But uh, There's long periods of silence where he doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, you and I went on a trip to Best Buy in Allentown because that was how you had to oh, buy wow. games back then. Oh, yeah. That was before you could. Holy shit. Was, was there even a PlayStation store you could download games from at that point? Not in three. Not in three. Oh, there might have been. There definitely was, but I thought that came... Yeah, I don't think you'd get digital copies of games then. Man, but I remember going because it was on sale. And I remember I played the demo before that and didn't really get into it. Like, I played it and it was fine. Yeah. And then Bad Blood kept telling me, you got just keep playing. Just keep playing. So it went down on sale to like 30 bucks or something like that. So you and I went. I believe you got one of the Prince of Persia games while you were there. I believe that because I think I've played a bunch of those. And maybe we both... Was that the day you and Probably I... Probably looked at a bunch of CDs and stuff, Oh, too. fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what else would you do at Best Buy? <laughs> Holy uh, shit. I, I think that. that might have been the trip you and I bought the Fallout 3 strategy guides. Might have been. This might have been two separate trips. But I don't remember. I don't know. No, because I think... that. Dude, it was Wait, like when did the PS3 ago. come out? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. It came out December <laughs> 2006. Pretty sure. Not going to look it up. And this came out in sure. 2008, you said? This came out August 21st, 2007 for Xbox 360. So it would have been 08 for sure for PlayStation. PlayStation. Maybe. Is that was that when I bought my PlayStation? Why are you looking at me like I know? Because you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there when you bought your PlayStation. I, okay, so it wasn't the when I bought my PlayStation. No, we it was not. Okay. You did not buy your PlayStation in front of me. Yeah, I definitely remember buying fallout with you though the game and the fucking big ass was that new vegas we bought that for no i, ne- I never had new vegas you never strategy had strategy guide well maybe maybe we got four no it was definitely three three right. was the only strategy guide i ever had that's right because i ordered four anyway none of this matters <laughs> <laughs> so what, is it, what does this have to do with bioshock let's get back into bioshock are we gonna talk about how awesome fort frolic is we can for sure it's awesome all right <laughs> Remind me what Fort Frolic is. Yeah, tell tell the viewers, listeners. It's a level in Bo- Bioshock. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the best levels in any video game ever. With the crazy man? With the crazy artist who asks you to kill people and take pictures of their bodies and then give it to them. I know. I, th- I felt so artistic when I was taking those pictures. <laughs> Did you try and frame it right? Yeah. I tried to make it look beautiful. Yeah, and he's just a great character anyway. If I remember correctly, that's also when you lose... Radio communications. Yeah, you lose contact with Atlas, and yeah, he's the only one who can talk to you. Is Xander Cohen? Oh, that's right, Cohen. And he doesn't let you leave until you finish the project. Yeah. Then you can kill, kill him or not. And the, if you kill him, you get like an extra reward there. Yeah. But you if get, you do not kill him, you get, you get something later. later. Yeah, like you go to his actual apartment later, and there's two people like. uh Dancing. Just dancing. Two splicers. Two splicers just dancing and being weird. And then you kill them and Xander Cohen will be like, what the fuck did you just do? And he like comes down from his top apartment and unlocks the door. But then you have to kill him. And then you kill him anyway. and you can go yeah. up there. Yeah, but in his, I think you, there's like one of the weapon upgrades things is in his apartment. Yeah. yeah. If you kill him earlier, you can't get in there later. Yeah. I knew it's like something. Like you get a special, like, what are they called? Plasmids? Yeah. Or something if you kill them early? I think they're plasmids. And then you get game. a different one if you kill them No, it's not the, it's the tonics. You got a tonic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plasmids are in three or infinite. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, got, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I thought tonics were, I don't know. Right? Anyway. Tonics were like the buffs. And like you could like put six of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Plasmids are, what are they called in infinite? They're not plasmids. No, they're not. There's different names for them. Yeah. Vigors. Vigors. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. What a great series. And we did just get that news recently that they're starting another Bioshock game. I don't know. I'll wait and see. 
I mean, I'm still going to buy it day one because I make uh, decisions. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I like to buy things before I even look at them. Yeah, for sure. And then, hey, I'm stuck. I own it. Might as well play it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll probably play it, but I'm going to be wary. Yeah, it's going to be hard to be. you got like five years to worry about it. Yeah, you're That's right. <laughs> Fuck. That's very true. Um, but yeah, I just, the feeling of going down underneath the water through the uh, lighthouse and just being in complete darkness and on that elevator thing and then seeing Rapture. Yeah. It's oh, so yeah. fucking awesome. I, I watched a video on YouTube of, uh, it was I think it's by Boundary Break, where they take a video game and go outside the limits of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were like doing like, they were doing in that scene like what else is like done and then like the behind you is completely empty and like stuff's not there. Oh yeah, it's interesting. Because why would they render yeah. the stuff you're not ever going to be? And there's able like to look stuff at. that's that's you couldn't you can't see, but it's still rendered. Yeah, some of that stuff's there and like that. They do that for a bunch of games. It's yeah, a it's a YouTube channel. It's a good game. Very atmospheric. I'm a huge fan of that. It would be cool to play 3D once they actually get that. Yeah, it was. I like the idea that. You're in a structure that's large, and you can get through and go to different areas, but you, it still feels claustrophobic because you, you're underwater. Because you're underwater, yeah. It's scary, so. Like one bad break in one of those things, and it's filled with water, and you're fucking dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, it's a damn good game. Man, what a I'd game. play it again. What was your favorite plasmid? I mean, I don't remember any of them. I think the bees was my favorite. The bees is pretty cool. Oh, I don't, I don't, know, pretty I don't cool. know if that was in two or this one. I think it was in this one because there's a section where you go into the beehive. Yeah. Yeah. But that could be too. <laughs> um, no, you're definitely not a big daddy when you do it, I don't think. No, the uh, the lightning plasmid was probably, I'd say, the most overall best. Well, that was, yeah, the most useful because you could... You could unlock shit. You could just chain, like, electricity together uh, to kill them. Uh, the yeah. freeze one was cool. Freeze one was good. Fire. I mean, that was always fun. Now, would that be a Metromania? No. <laughs> I'm not going to get it. Kinda, because you have to get like certain plasmids, and then you can go back and unlock shit. Yeah, but you don't really go back for anything. You well, like, could go back, there, but there's you, nothing. Uh, there's nothing gated in the back. When you get the fire plasmid, the game, you have it? to go back to the beginning and melt that ice, and then you can get under there to move the game along. Yeah, but that's part of it. There's nothing like hidden behind. You don't go back there for no reason. I don't think I'm gonna get it. I'm just not gonna get it. We'll I know. I think he's just making me more confused the way he's talking about. <laughs> But I do remember there's one of the power to the people stations down there, the yeah. weapon upgrades. Yeah, okay. And there's there's also a plasmid that controls big daddies, right? Like they'll fight for you if you hit them with it? Yeah. I forget well, what that's I don't remember any of this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was that. There was one where it's like a easy security hacking. Yeah. That will well, immediately that's a tonic, turn. isn't it? No, that made it quicker or Did, easier to okay. do. Was this where you had to hack with like the tubes? Pipe dream. Yeah. 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 Another great game we should do one week. <laughs> Pipe Dream. And I remember like you could go to the cameras that were like hard or difficult if you never upgraded that tonic. And the pipe like puzzle was either impossible. Yeah. yeah. It was way yeah. too fast. Or way too fast. Like it, it was so much difficult. You could but you could actually freeze it to make that stuff go slower. Yeah. If oh really? If you froze yeah. it with the the cooling pat plasmid. Huh. So many things I didn't know about. Didn't you play the game? <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to question that. <laughs> I mean, I remember playing through... I believe the Bioshock collection's on sale right now. I know I own it. I know I played through the original game three or four times, and I know I played through the collection a couple times. I know I played through the original. I probably played through Bioshock twice, once and then on the re the collection. I didn't play the hard modes because those were ridiculous. Or the don't use a Vita chamber. They weren't that bad. You just couldn't Did die. Did you numb it? Because I didn't. I, yeah, I numbed all of them. Yeah, you played on easy, then you don't you die. Have to, you have to play it on hard. To get to unlock it, though. No, I remember uh, you could really cheaply... Oh, change the difficulty right before the yeah, end. Yeah, on like 1999 mode, I think it was called, or something like that. Oh, really? You could you could beat it right as Atlas is dying. You could hit the pause button and then change the difficulty. <laughs> and then it worked. Not mm -hmm. that I would do that, though. No. It's just wrong. Uh, no, you wouldn't easy numb anything. No, I don't get easy numbs. Like, my name is Mayo. I think I have that twice. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> You're also talking to the guy over here that did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yeah. So you did have much more tolerance. That was a good and movie. wet. He, num he numbed wet. Yeah, that was more. Why wouldn't you? That was a hate numb against oh. this guy over here. <laughs> well, you, you most it things I do. It. <laughs> it's very possible. Most things I do are <laughs> to hate him. 
Yeah, you numbed the game. I put in, got one trophy, and quit. And I was pissed I couldn't delete the trophy list. I remember that. You, you were can now, can you? Not if you have one trophy. You have to have oh, zero trophies. Okay. Because I went back and deleted a lot of games I didn't get any trophies in. But you can hide them now. Yeah. He has one hand. Right. <laughs> yeah, like you, you, I think I, I probably hid wet. You probably can't see it on my list. Oh, he's just admitting to it here, guys. <laughs> oh, no, we got him. I'm sure there's plenty of games I hit on there that you'll never know I played. Like what? Name I a couple. Know. Name 20. He's calling I'd out have, hackers. Let I'd, me see sc- screen caps of his. <laughs> I'd have to look at my list, and then you'd have to look at what you can see of mine to see what was not on there. That ah, sounds like a lot of work. It does. because Yeah, of you know what? Forget it. I'm almost at 1,300. You disgust me. Or 13,000. I didn't even hit 10,000 yet. What the hell is a trophy? I know. Right? <laughs> You know what a numb is, right? Yeah, but what's a trophy? Because I, I know on PSM profiles, their count is about a thousand lower than mine actually is. So there's probably a thousand trophies worth of stuff hit. Update it. Wow. Wow, what a disgusting human. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> those are games I didn't play. All the games I played are still there. So let, how about we stop bullshitting here? <laughs> Never. <laughs> and we actually get into the game, which is, like we said, number two. Bioshock. Number two. Beep, beep. Let's just start, Get go with the story here. You first get underground and you're contacted b- via radio by a guy named Atlas. And Atlas tells you he will help you basically get the fuck out of here, but you need to help him save his family first. That's like the gist, right? Yeah, that's how the whole impetus for the first part is. Yeah. Go here and do this so we can get to my family. It's like, but, yeah. yeah. Standard video game story pacing and logic. Do something for me, then I'll help you advance. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll save you from the underground city you just put yourself in. Yeah, I'll, just get, I'll get you out of here, even though you could just take the elevator up. Or you could have not have taken the elevator at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why are you getting in a fucking weird bubble ball? <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, you should just stay in the Like, people are going to show up at the lighthouse. Yeah, eventually. Like a day, maybe, if that. Was this... I never got the the feeling that Rapture was like 100% self-enclosed. Like, it always seemed like people could come and go from it. Until, you know, the shit went down. Yeah. Was that the only entrance? That's the only one you ever see. But there are other bathospheres that take you around, so maybe you can go from any bathosphere. Yeah, because bathospheres aren't on a track, right? They just... Yeah, wouldn't you, in theory, just be able to, like, float to the surface and get the fuck out of there? I guess you didn't need to go to the lighthouse dock. Yeah. But what do I know? I assume it's, like, like Futurama tube world. Yeah, that's, maybe that's what it is. You know, I obviously you know. I know what you mean when you say Futurama tube world. But uh, how about you explain it for our listeners that may, maybe don't know? The way to get from point A to point B is a tube system but that's not because your bathosphere is just floating around in plain water and if they're not watching Futurama I don't know if we want them as fans yeah I mean come on eh, maybe they're youngins (laughs) good point (laughs) shout out to all the Futurama fans out there hey hey (laughs) so so, uh, the first guy you get to in your fun adventures I believe is Mr. John S. Steinman Uh, you guys remember who this guy is the psycho doctor well, you get introduced to big daddies first and little yeah, sisters. Yeah, you don't fight them first, though. No, well. That's it, when you take your first. How do you take your first plasmid? Just Atlas tells you to put, like, inject this in your arm? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. That's all. You need the lightning to open the door. Right. And he, like, freaks out and falls off the balcony and sees the splicers. It's like the first. Yeah. And a big daddy walks over you and the little yeah, sisters. Yeah, okay. Yes. But yes, then then you go to Dr. Steinman, and he's kind of physical. He's a plastic surgeon. Yeah, plastic surgeon. Right. I thought you encountered the little sister after this, but I could be incorrect. Well, yeah, you can't do anything when you see her the first time. Yeah. You just walk. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because if you try to shoot and get in a fight with a big daddy the first time you see it, you're in for a bad time. Yeah, true. So what happens? You have a boss fight with this guy. He every All the splicers, too, I, I realized in the game, like... They spout off a bunch of gibberish because they're going insane. <laughs> yeah. But every once in a while, you'll hear them reference Dr. Steinman. They'll be like, Dr. Steinman will fix me. And then they attack you with a wrench or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. They're all like, they were normal people, right? Yeah. They weren't born splicers. 
Yeah, the the backstory, I guess we should explain before we get yeah. too far, <laughs> is that um, there was a whole bunch of people living in Rapture in this underground city, city seemingly. They, they're talking about how like interpersonal conflicts were bringing it down, but everyone was still alive at that point. And then basically the plasmids got out of control and there was a civil war down there. Yeah, and they drove people insane. Right. And basically the insane are the only people left because the good people either probably got out or got murdered. So the plasmids were driving people insane. Well, you're rewriting your DNA. Yeah, Atlas tells you that, right? Yeah. But then he's telling you to fucking put plasmids in you. <laughs> yeah. Like constantly. Okay. Well, he wants what he wants, right? Yeah. Well, he doesn't fuck around. No, he absolutely does not. When you uh, first see the doctor, he runs away and blows up something behind him and then... They're like, oh, you need another plasmid to advance. Oh, yeah. Go get the telekinesis plasmid. Is that the telekinesis or the fire? It doesn't matter. You get matter. both, but the telekinesis is the one you need because you have to catch the bombs from this. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then, then he fights Timon. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that being like uh, a very difficult fight the first time I played the game because you didn't really know how to use your ammo or your plasmids. Like, yeah. yeah you I, I had like three shotgun shells when I tried to fight him. Yeah, exactly. You don't have enough ammo. You don't have enough plasmid for him. Do you get the camera before or after you fight him? After. After, okay. Yeah, it's when way you, after. When you go to the fisheries, you got to... The guy sends you for it. But. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Uh, yeah the, go ahead. I was just going to say, the whole point of the game is to get out, and this is the way to get Atlas what he wants. Because mm-hmm. you're still working your way towards his family. Right. You're not specifically doing any tasks for him. These are just what's standing in your way. Right, that's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're just on your way to the fishery so you can get to the fucking people. And then you encounter the little sister next to a fallen Big Daddy. Yep. The Big Daddies, of course, are the protectors of the little sisters as they harvest what's called Eve. Adam. And everyone's... Oh, that's right. Sorry. (laughs) Adam. And everyone wants that Adam. It fuels plasmids. Well, Adam lets you get better plasmids or more. Eve is the stuff you use to use your plasmids. Oh, okay. Eve hypo. I got gotcha. you. Right. And uh, you basically get a choice. You can either... Atlas tells you that that's not a little girl anymore because she's under some hypnotized spell or whatever, and you should just harvest her, essentially. And she turns into like a little slea- sea slug. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> or you can choose to save them, and Dr. Tenenbaum gives you a plas Not a plasmid. A... Uh, Something. The other thing you can get. Yeah, yeah that lets you save them. <laughs> right, yeah. and then you can save them, and you can you get less at them, but then they're alive. And you find out later that if you save, like, three, they'll leave you a present of more at them. Ooh. So it actually it, it benefits you immediately to harvest all the little sisters, but it doesn't benefit you really at all long term. Yeah. Whew, that was a lot. So then where do you go from here, Mr. Scientist? Well, do you want to talk about Tenenbaum a little bit? or? Oh, yeah, when you're harvesting, before you harvest it. What's her backstory? She's like, does she's, I don't know, I would say the nursery mother for these little sisters. Did she create them? Atlas says she created all these little monsters. She's some kind of scientist. I think, and I was thinking about this too after I got through it, but she might be the only... I don't want to say the only good person in the whole game, but she I, I, she helped either take care of these little girls or train them or condition them to be little sisters, and now she's trying to basically save them and fix this. Yeah. Yeah, but she did fuck them up in the first place. Yeah, exactly. But she's trying to right her wrongs, though. All right. Seemingly. But uh, the, she's like the den mother now, I guess, for the rogue little sisters. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, everyone you heal or whatever. But uh, she's de- definitely in your corner the whole time. She's she's one of the helpers. Yeah. Because you help the little sisters. Yeah. If you help them. But if you don't help them, does she just, just talk shit to you the whole time? Like, fuck off. I think she's more like she understands, but she still wishes you wouldn't do that. Yeah. All right. That's what I thought. And she's not friends with Atlas. No, nobody is. Or Andrew Ryan. Now, there seems to be definitely... A lot of high power people, and later we'll get to Su Chong, but they all kind of went their own way. Yeah. And kind of started butting heads, and that's how the Civil War started. Fun fact, though, in Bioshock 2, not to get ahead of ourselves, the multiplayer mode in Bioshock 2 is the Civil War. That's how they frame it, which I thought was a pretty neat mechanic. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. 
Maybe we should talk about Andrew Ryan, who actually created all of Rapture too. Well, where do you finally? Where do you first well, hear mean, of him? He talks it to you on the way down to Rapture. Oh, okay. That his dream was to create a city where he's the guy who sounded like Ayn Rand. Yeah, where he's like, you can do science without the pesky morality. Yeah, 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 yeah. And shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else is his deal? Well, he was in charge of Rapture until all this craziness happened, and then it kind of split into factions. But he still is, I guess, in charge of Rapture. Now, at this point in the game, though, you're not gunning for Ryan, or Atlas isn't sending you at Ryan, right? Like, no, you're just trying yeah. to... But he's talking As far as you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then he'll talk to you, and I guess Ryan... I don't know what Ryan's goal is in this game. I think he's just happy to be on Rapture. Yeah, he still runs Probably. Rapture, right? I mean, he thinks he runs Rapture. Well, he's not getting point. Fucked, fucked with by all the splicers and shit. He, like, the splicers do his bidding, don't they? I think the splicers do whatever they want. Yeah, but they don't fuck with him. No. Because they know, like, he's the guy who built the place. They have respect for him. I th- maybe? I always thought, like, his apartment and stuff were just, like, a stronghold. That oh, no yeah. Yeah, you're right. He's just got fucking crazy magnetic locks that nobody can get in. He's just kind of cool hanging out there. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. It's like, I'm here. And then pretending that you're that he's still in charge basically yeah he's self-sufficient just in his own apartment how long have they been all down there i th- oh uh i think they started building it in 50 or 52 and it, the game takes place in 1960 so it had been they built it really fucking quick yeah and within eight years everyone's fucking <laughs> <laughs> crazy and shit which eventually in the third game we get an explanation for but well, Let's not, not jump ahead. Yeah. It seems like impossibly advanced science, basically, that's keeping Rapture down there. Well, yeah, it's retrofuturism. <laughs> Classic. Classic <laughs> retrofuturism. <laughs> yep, yeah, absolutely. So then after you kill the guy and you need to move forward, you go off to Neptune's Bounty. Which and is the we run in. Which is the fishery, and yeah. we run into one of our other main characters, who is who, scientist? Uh, I do not know. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you get to that Peach door. Peach Wilkins? And- That's what I yeah. got down, too. Is that Peach Wilkins? I, yeah. I didn't know he was important. Yeah, I was going to say, he's <laughs> not like one of the most important people in the story. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, he's probably right underneath Tenenbaum, I'd say. I missed that part. He's literally no, he's not. right underneath Tenenbaum in my notes. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, Peach Wilkins. He's talking. He can't be talking about Peach yeah. Wilkins. The, the famous. <laughs> now, this is the part I don't understand. Because you get into Peach. You find Peach Wilkins behind a door. And he's like, I'll let you through. But you got to go take pictures for me. Do his research. Yeah, he wants to know enemies' weaknesses. So he's got an upper hand. But it seems a little late for that, right? I mean, the Splicers and Big Daddies and Little Sisters kind of run the place at this point. Yeah, but he's got the port, right? And there's no none behind his door. That's true. He's kind of like fucking Ryan just sitting like safe behind yeah. a door. So it's, I guess it's part of his like regroup strategy. Like, let's lock this place off. We're all humans here. We'll regroup. Now go out there and figure out how we can kill these things. Because this does play, t- take place like right after the Civil War. <laughs> Well, the story, if I'm remembering this correctly, at this point is you want to get out, obviously, but you want to save the little sisters. You want to save, help Tenenbaum, basically. You're no longer being controlled by Atlas, but Tenenbaum is kind of steering you in the right direction. Well, it's your choice still at that point. It is, yes. But at the same time, you're kind of, I kind of got the idea that it's like, well, I need to get out of here anyway, and Fontaine's in the way. So no matter which choice you make, you got to kill Fontaine. Yeah. But uh, anyway, what happens after this code yellow <laughs> nonsense? <laughs> you have to go find solution 192 because that'll help. Once you drink it, it'll yeah cut down the fucking mind control a little more. And I kind of zoned out in the cutscene movie because I've, like you, like you scientists, I've played through this game probably six times. Yeah. Four to six times at least. And I kind of remember this section being exactly like the bomb section. Like you got to do a whole bunch of little yeah. shit to make the formula. Yeah, you do. And is this the thing 
I'm, I'm getting two in this one confused, but is this the thing that's like unstable and it keeps flying to other areas? No, this one, when you drink it, it starts switching your plasmids randomly. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. I'm thinking, I'm probably thinking of infinite then with that one, but so then you can, yes. So eventually you do get it though. Yeah. You drink two of them. You have to drink two and then, oh, look at that. Nothing matters. Again, you're back to going to try to find Fontaine. But the only only way to get into his door is if you have a little sister help you. So oh, that's right. you have to go dress up as a big daddy and get the little sister to help you. Yes. Which is another part of you just running around collecting things until you yeah. can actually do it. Right. I felt like this part was a little poorly timed. And by the way, when I say negative things about this game, guys, I'm really like nitpicking <laughs> and trying to find negative oh, things because yeah, I love it. it. So I'm. It's a great game. So this section where it's like, oh, that's the door. You can get in and kill him. But you got to become a big daddy and then manipulate a little sister into helping you and then you can get in. Which doesn't make fucking sense because once you save one, couldn't you just be like, hey, hey, before you yeah, yeah. run away, open this door for me. And what's the difference between the little sisters who have been quote unquote cured and are like normal little girls versus the eyes yeah, I, glazed over Adam collectors? I don't know. Maybe the Adam, only the Adam ones can open the doors. I don't know. That would be the only thing I could believe. Right. I guess. But uh, this section that you're in, this you get a lot of information from Su Chong. He kind of like fills out the story, and this is where you realize he's such a big part of this whole story. But um, you have to go to his lab to get answers. But also, this is that little section I was talking about, uh, Chump's lab, where you can go to Cohen's apartment. Or not Cohen, yeah, Sander yeah, Cohen's, apartment. Cohen's apartment. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is where he comes back. Yeah, he's standing in the two places are dancing. Which was fucking creepy as hell. There's so <laughs> many creepy moments to this game. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really atmospherically awesome. Yeah, which, I mean, what other games are horror, terrifying games, and also first-person shooters? Fear? I was going to say Fear, but that's the only one I could think of. <laughs> yeah. That's it. The suffering. <laughs> so, that wasn't first person. Right? Oh, it was third person. Yeah. Well, you could switch to first person. Just oh, saying, yeah. <laughs> but there, the, I feel like that's a real untapped market. Like those yeah. games to get that atmosphere and get people in the game. And if you made that game VR, holy shit, I would like, buy it. Look how awesome fucking Bioshock did. I mean, it was only ten years ago, but where's another one like it? The only game that felt in any way like a Bioshock clone was Singularity. And I'm not saying that as a strike against it. It's like the Jaws Piranha movie thing. Like, it's a clone and kind of a ripoff, but it's a damn good game in its own right. Yeah, yeah. I had a question about this Big Daddy thing. (laughs) Sure. I get it. You have to become a Big Daddy because that's the only way the sisters will listen to you. But why do you have to change your voice? Because you never fucking say a word. But there's a part where you're supposed to do it. Do big daddies even ever say anything? No, so that's what I'm saying. Well, why do you have to smell like one? Well, that I can see. The pheromones because of the pheromones. Yeah. Uh, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> fine. I'll go down your path, chump slap, but don't come over here with whatever. I'm just saying Jack never said a word in the fucking game. Why all of a sudden does he have to change his voice if he's never said anything? And the big daddies don't talk, so they don't. it's not like Yeah, that. and not a big – you've never seen a big daddy be like, Hey, little sister, come over here. Get this Adam here. Come on. Hey, little sister, what have you no. <laughs> Hey, hey, we can't clear that. Shut up. <laughs> That's why I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rule I've heard is under 30 seconds, so we're all yeah. fine. Under all right, 30? Good. Oh, shoot. Good, good job. So I guess eventually you go around and you get your, your parts and your voice and your stink. Stink being important. <laughs> stink was very important. He needed yeah. three stinks. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> Need to smell like a motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus. Hashtag smell like a motherfucker. So <laughs> you you uh do you find a little sister or do you kill her big daddy? I don't remember. No, you have to go and knock on yeah, the things that come out of hit the thing oh, with your fucking wrench yeah. and they'll, they'll pop out. Because they're all crawling around the pipes yeah. all the time. Oh, and then here comes the escort mission. Yep, and then an escort mission. Then escort mission, and you have to protect her. Now this is a confusing thing and i'm gonna break our rule but i'm gonna talk about bioshock 2 for a second i know (laughs) i know but in this sequence (laughs) spoiler 
in this sequence, you have you're a big daddy and you have to protect the little sister as she's gathering Adam from dead bodies. Which is a whole of Bioshock too. Well, this is the thing I don't understand. This was probably mechanically, not mechanically, they did a good job of it, but pr- one of the worst sequences in the game. It didn't make sense compared to everything else to me. It it does fit the story. It's definitely story appropriate, but it f- I just hated it. I hated it every time I had to do it where it's like, it's like a horde mode, basically. Yeah. It seems like they just added it on to make the game longer. Like, right. It could have been done by at this point. Yeah. But then, oh, we need turn yourself into a big daddy and then do this. Which I get. And I get how it's a decent change of pace in this game. But then this is like the whole fucking point of Bioshock 2. Yeah. <laughs> you do this dozens of times. Like, why would you take one of the weakest segments in Bioshock 1 and make that a core mechanic in 2? I don't know. Will, yeah, I didn't really hey, I was... listeners, if you want to hear the answer to that, listen to our Bioshock 2 episode coming out in, I don't know. August 2020. August Ooh. 2020. All right. Sold. What's a date on it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe before then. <laughs> We're, uh, I think that when we do Infinite, because it's happening at some point, when yeah. we do Bioshock Infinite, that might have to be a two-parter. That's a big one. We could have made this a two-parter, really. Well, but. there's still time. We've only been talking for about an hour. Although we're almost done with the game. Yeah, we're almost done. Now. You get through this segment. What happens after that? Well, she opens the door and you work your way to your showdown with Frank Fontaine. Yeah. And Fontaine is super pissed you broke his programming. Yeah. And now you... Oh, there's also a, a note I just want to add here where Su Chong, the HSIC, <laughs> he, it was his drugs that put you under Atlas's spell. Yeah, I thought it was his whole program. Yeah, didn't of. he... Weren't you born in a laboratory yeah. of Su Chong? And then shipped to the surface? You're basically a man-child, which would explain the not talking. Why were you even shipped to the surface just to come back down? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a decent question. Why didn't they hide him on Rapture somewhere? Yeah. Why did he have to come from the outside? If he was growing so fast anyway, he was 19... Yeah, two or whatever. Anyway, you go to the fight with Fontaine. Yeah. All right, silly. But, Which yeah. is, well, not only is that silly, but the fight with Fontaine is a little silly, too. Fucking yeah. stupid. You got to stab him in the heart and steal his atom. Yeah, all of a sudden, the little sister's like, here, yeah. have my atom fucking syringe. Why weren't there big daddies running around with those before? <laughs> well, the big daddies only work for the little sisters. They, but she you gave can't... you the syringe thinking you're a big daddy. Yeah, good point. Or were you out of, out of the, I don't know. Well, anyway, you got to stab him in the heart and he attacks you. And then you got to stab him in the heart again and he attacks you. It's four, four, four phases. Yeah. And eventually he flips out. Ah! And then at one point, am I remembering correctly, the little sisters all basically gang tackle him? Yeah, after you beat him, he kind of like knocks you down and then they yeah. start stabbing him. Does that happen no matter how you save or harvest? I should have watched the bad ending, but... Because I assume they don't they don't come out and help you otherwise. I think they do anyway because they still want to kill him. But Yeah, either way, they're not fans of Fontaine. No one is. Because this is a question. I don't even know if it got answered in this, but w- the, originally the Adam was taken from the sea slugs. Because even there's a couple segments where you find the sea slugs and you get like five or ten Adam from them. Yeah, you walk oh, yeah, outside yeah. for a little bit. Right, and... That was Su Chong's best way to get Adam, the scientist. But why do the little sisters exist? They just exist to get Adam, right? They just exist to collect it. And I'm I'm thinking that was the last ditch effort to get them to collect the dead bodies. Or how did we make that leap? You know what I mean? How did we make the leap from like why little are the sisters? <laughs> why are they? Why are they hanging out with big daddies? And why are they harvesting Adam? In eight years. Since this yeah. place started getting built. Everybody wants Adam. They're like black market. Yeah, I don't know. I guess. I mean, And maybe this question's answered in later games, but we didn't. I didn't feel like there was a satisfactory answer. You just kind of went with it, which is fine. You can't. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't get a valid explanation for it. No, but any hoodles, now we get our two different endings. You have the good ending and you have the bad ending. Sure do. Why don't you tell us about both of them? <laughs> no, th- I'm giving this to you guys. 
Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, I'll do okay. the good ending. I don't know what happens in the bad ending. All right, yeah. I'll do the bad ending. So, Chump Slap, give us the good ending. The which, by the way, before you start, this is the canon ending. Yes, yes. When you save the little sisters, you save the little sisters. They help kill Fontaine, and then it. The only difference is Tenenbaum. Is she the one narrating? Yeah. Yes, in this case. And she, she just yes. says, thank you. And then there's scenes of like people graduating college and getting right. married, little sisters growing up and having lives and shit. And she's like, you saved them. They can have lives. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, and I guess in the canon ending, you adopted five of them as your daughter, daughters. And you like raised them as like human beings in the real world. Did That's you? the good, best case yeah, scenario. Yeah, yeah. Did you die quickly? I don't think so. No, I, I got an image. That I got through that image that they were the children were at least adults. Yeah, but no, you don't keep aging as fast as you okay. Are. You just matured that quickly and then lived yeah. your rest of your life normally. I suppose so. That I guess yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. You didn't have any more Adam to live off, so I guess you aged normally. Okay. The Adam sped you up. Okay, so what happens when you slaughter all the little sisters? Yeah. When you slaughter all the little sisters, I'm glad you asked me that. Um, (laughs) The narrator is still Tannenbaum, but she sadly narrates what happened there, and she actually takes time to condemn Jack for killing all the little sisters. So she's already not thrilled. It's a bad tone to the narration. But uh, then a U.S. Navy sub finds the wreckage of the airplane. And when that's happening, splicers surface, and they attack the crew, uh, the crew of the sub and take control of it. You also find out the sub is carrying nuclear missiles, and Dr. T claims, Dr. Tenenbaum claims that Jack has, quote, stolen the terrible secrets of the world. And I didn't know this about this narration, but Dr. Tenenbaum's narration gets more harsh and more pissy the more Little Sisters you killed. Yeah, I read that, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. I wonder how yeah, much. Yeah, so if you accidentally took two instead of the allotted one, then she's like, she's kind of condemning she's you and kind of casual. And then if you kill them all, she's pissed. Yeah. But either way, you know, none of that actually matters because it's not the All right, Papa needs a new bird suit! Oh! You suck. Yeah. Busted oh, again. Fuck. Oh, hey. Hey. Didn't, didn't notice you guys come back. Uh, we are, as you know, counting down our top five scored games of 2019 in plotty time episodes that we did in 2019. Yeah. I don't know how to word that properly, apparently. <laughs> you said it a couple the times. The highest works. scoring games of 2019. Yeah. Plotty but, uh, time scoring. So scoring. let's go down. Let's go down the top list again. All right. Number five, Dr. Scientist. Infamous. Number four, Chump Slap. Darksiders. Number three, me. It's Dead Space. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Number two, Dr. Scientist. Bioshock. And that leaves us with number one, a game that we all played. Kane and so Lynch much. 2. Kane and Lynch 2, <laughs> dog days. I probably have a, <sighs> probably have 300 hours in this game. What is it? We're what? leaning into it. Easy, yeah. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, you probably have more than me, but I remember playing it. I played it, it twice. Like, Oh man, I farmed the shit out of this game. Yeah, Holy I don't see how much time I put in the third installment of this game. I would imagine it's got to be two or three times that for this one. Not much, you think? There's a lot of farming I did because farming is much easier in three. Yeah, you could farm for specifics in two. Yeah, and you can a little bit now in three, but not nearly as much as two. All right. Well, how about we? Yeah, I guess we should tell them what game it is. It farm is- simulator. <laughs> Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 is I, our number one game of 20. I probably have a day's worth of time just farming Terramorphous. Because it took me forever to get a high to Terramorphous. I farmed Bunker forever. And yeah, you still did. never got the skin. What skin was that? I don't know. I never saw <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the legendary skin that Bunker drops. Yeah. He drops a Bunker head or something. I don't know what it was, but I never got it. I think I'm going to go fire up my game, see if I have it. I don't think it exists. <laughs> I think it was like a glitch thing. Like it never showed up on the ground. So you can never pick it up. I had a couple of times in that game where they'd spawned underground and I couldn't get yeah. it. That's really cool. 
I know. That's why I love playing it. <laughs> like that's bunker. why we scored it so high. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know I played through as my first character was... Z- not Zero. Uh, Zero was my first character. Oh, no, right, yes. I, Zero was my first. Lilith was mine. Th- was, no, uh, Maya in two. Was there a hunter? Zero. No, the other guy with the... Salvador, Hawk? Axton. He was in one. Okay. Yeah, Axton, I think, was my second playthrough. And then I played through one with the Gunzerker guy. What's his name? Salvador. Salvador. I played... Through Maya, and then I did a little bit of Gage, but I did mostly Maya through everything. No, yeah, I definitely didn't do Gage. I think I did a little bit with Gage and a little bit with Krieger, but I was not really thrilled. You uh, you were a siren for a while, Maya. Yeah. Because I remember you and I farming Hyperius the Invincible, the one with the four robots. Oh. Uh, and we could respect ourselves to, re- to Rez. Which was her thing that could oh, resurrect yeah. somebody. Okay, oh, was that's that right. one of the uh, raid bosses? Yeah, from the... The pirate one? The pirate DLC. Yeah, that's the only DLC I played. Master G was the annoying one with the worms, and then right. Imperius was the four robots one. But at least with Master G, the worms would come out and you can kill them. And The only way I could ever beat that was by cheesing it, where you could hide. Oh, yeah, wasn't there like acid that came on the ground? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. If, yeah, you had to kill the, the worm, and then the worm started spilling like acid out. And if mass, you have to, you're supposed to keep killing worms and have Master G run across it and absorb it. But if you didn't absorb it, it slowly filled the room and killed you. Oh, yeah. I remember Great. that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Because they, they had to come up with ways for you to fight bosses and not cheese them with conference call and the bee, which was my go to. Yeah. Uh, sure. Once once they nerfed the B, I was done. <laughs> I never used the B, so it never mattered. It's so anything. good, Dude, it was like I used Neo Janitor. Two evolution. shots with the covers called B. And <laughs> who was the main bad guy at the end? The warrior. The warrior. You kill the warrior in two shots. No way. Yeah, with the covers called the B. Calling the B before could. it was nerfed. Oh, maybe you killed. Terra I was probably done fucking show. farming him at that point. Yeah, I don't even remember. I don't think I Terramorphus was the one that was harder to farm. Yeah, I always did. I always used uh, Hide Terramorphus against Terramorphus and uh, what the fuck's the shotgun I used? Moxie's, Moxie's shotgun? It's shot in a heart shape. I have no idea. And every like all the Moxie weapons in that game, when you did elemental damage, you healed yourself. And since I was a siren and doing elemental damage all the time, I constantly got health back. Hmm. Yes. What was your go-to gun? Besides, Moxie, obviously, I think the Moxie it's shot. Moxie's Heartbreaker, Hellfire. I used the volcano. The volcano. I was just yeah, gonna say, volcano a lot of sniper volcano. was awesome. Yeah, back when snipers were good. Yeah, they suck in three. Yeah, I haven't even bothered. Volcano them. sniper's awesome. If it was snipers would be good, it'd be awesome in that. I know because the storm sniper is awesome too. Yeah, just causes lightning to strike where you shoot. And yeah, and the, the volcano one shoots balls of magma. Out. Yeah, that's pretty neat. But uh, and uh, I believe I used the hornet a lot in two. Is that a pistol? Yes. You got it from Bully Mong, the Bully Mong in the beginning. Oh, that's right. That was one of the first ones I got. I got yeah. it like level Oh, six. level one. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like, great. That'll be and, helpful. And the best thing to get low level was fucking bonus package. Oh, yeah. Oh, I definitely got that level one or two. Yeah, I got like I, yep. think I had a level six one. Because then at the end of the game, you could just blow it up and just things blow up and it doesn't kill you. It's good stuff. But then when I played it again and they had the Sanctuary DLC, Commander Lilith and then whatever Sanctuary. I never played that. I got the pitchfork, and once you get the pitchfork, you don't need another weapon. Pitchfork's ridiculous. Is that the sniper rifle that shoots three? The assault. Well, yeah, that's right. What's the assault rifle called? Pitchfork is the sniper rifle, but this is called something else. It's not the Varuk. That's a no. different thing. Oh, the Varuk was awesome. Yeah, I love that one. No, it was the rainbow one they added to the DLC. I gave you a copy of it that was low level. Low, it's like 60 something, but. Was there. You duped it? No. It was like you can farm it easily. <laughs> was there a. Uh... I vaguely remember feeding. What the fuck was it called? Uh, Iridium to Butt Stallion. Yep, and that was a thing, things. right? Yeah, you saved Butt Stallion in. What the fuck are you talking about? Butt Stallion is. Oh, he uh, never played the Tiny 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 Tina. No, DLC. I never played any of the DLCs. Oh, dude, the Tiny Tiny Tina DLC was fantastic. Yeah, it was really. Fantastic. I might go back and play it now. It was like. Uh, it's the best DLC ever made. It's up there. Like I'd put it right up there with Bioshock Two. It's better the, than uh, the Pit. Yeah. Yeah, because um, you're you're playing the game and it's like a narration from Tiny Tina. Oh, she's, like she's playing D and D. Yeah, yeah. 
and you go through and play it. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that sounds like something that's right down my alley now. And the end is great. Yeah. The end is fantastic. I won't spoil it for you. That's fine. And there's skeletons you fight, and you fight like orcs and stuff along the way. I was like playing the Dark, Dark Souls board game. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> toothpick. That's what the Oh, is yeah. Oh. The toothpick and the floss dance. <laughs> <laughs> the floss dance? Toothpick is... Yeah, wasn't that invented in Borderlands 2? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. That kid online no. sued Fortnite. Yeah. As they should have. Hashtag Fortnite. There's also a unicorn explosion, which I never got. Didn't the guy from Fresh Prince sue Fortnite? Yes. Yeah. And he lost. Yeah. Well, as he should, because it's not... You don't own that. Well, he also ripped the dance off from Courtney Cox and that Bruce Springsteen yeah, video. Yeah, exactly. Which he said publicly several times. So I didn't think he had much... Carlton didn't have much sway in that lawsuit. Well, they were his exact body movements. That's true. They were. Very exact. Kind of used to listen. If Butt Stallion's ever going to be in Borderlands Three, there's a Butt Stallion grenade, ain't there? Yeah, you get that from the pre-order package. But in the the Commander Lilith and Sanctuary, you save Butt Stallion from the downed Hyperion spaceship. And then, but then Butt Stallion's just hanging out at the camp yeah, or like main area. Going. Then you can feed Butt Stallion Iridium and it'll shit out guns. Huh. Yeah, That's just great. like real life. That's how it works with every horse. Well, yeah. Every time I've seen a horse, I try to feed him iridium. Yeah. <laughs> well, Butt Stallion was from the very beginning of the game in Borderlands 2. You might not remember, but when you're walking and he says, I got a diamond horse named it Butt Stallion after you. Yeah. 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 I but do then, remember that. But then Butt Stallion actually becomes a thing. Because I played the beginning of that fucking campaign so many times. <laughs> <laughs> times. Yeah. Sir Hammerlock meeting him in that oh, icy area. Oh, my God. Yeah. So many times. Fuck mm. me. Donkulous. And then fighting boom and boom. Yeah. yeah. The huge dude and the little guy. Yeah. Didn't they, didn't they spell like B-E-W-M or something like that? Yep. And B-O-O-M. Boom and boom. Just to get the bonus package. Yeah, farm them a while. Because there were some things that were annoying the farm, but that one wasn't too bad. Just running there and doing it. No, like I could go back and I could turn it on right now and farm fucking bunker for another two hours. <laughs> I don't care. I thought about doing it when I played through it again, but I was like, no, because it's a little bit of a run to get there again. Yeah, you have uh, to fight your way all around that thing. And it's annoying on yeah, True Vault you Hunter can't, mode. Like, turn it off. Yeah, you have to just keep respawning there. Yeah, and in True Vault Hunter mode, it's a pain in the ass to fight turrets. And oh, there's so many turrets on that base. Or that oh, and then a constructor. You have to fight two constructors, yeah. I think, on yeah, the way you up. Do. And they're terrible. All right, well, how about we uh, we stop talking about it and then we go back to a clip of us previously talking about <laughs> All it. All right. Oh, let's talk about it a little more, guys. Yeah. Well, while, while they're listening, we'll keep talking. <laughs> so this is our number one game of 2019. Number one. I'm, I'm pretty sick of hearing about it already. Any other news? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and... Move on a little bit. Uh, do to do to do. Uh, there's a movie coming out called Doctor Sleep. Have you guys heard about this? It's like a uh, sequel to The Shining. Wow, another movie that didn't need a sequel. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, well, looks all right, but who knows? Eh. Does it have Jack Nicholson in it? No, the. Lead actor is Ewan McGregor, who is playing a grown-up version of uh, the little kid in The Shining. I forget his name. According to The Simpsons, everyone died at the end of The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were still alive. You don't know if they were dead. Oh, they were frozen, though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they just couldn't move. I'm sure they're fine, <laughs> right? <laughs> like. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the Joker won the top prize at the Venice Film Festival. Not interested. I kind of want to see it. Yeah, I think it looks interesting. Yeah. But I, everybody wants to be, uh, what's his name's Joker? Heath Ledger's Joker, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, but he, this guy doesn't look anything like it. I heard that, or I read a review where someone was talking about how it's so, like it feels weird being in the DC universe. Like it could have been... uh a not like if they wouldn't have called the character the Joker and not named it Joker, it would have been fine if you didn't have any connection to DC Universe. Yeah, they should have just like the story it makes sense. Clownado, <laughs> Clownado, yeah, that would have been a better name. Perfect. Clowns are uh, I don't know. There's some good clown puns out there, right? 
Clowns aren't people. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hot take. Clown lives matter. I don't think so. How are we going to get those Montana listeners if you keep talking that <laughs> shit against clowns? Is anybody ever going to not laugh at a clown dying in a horrific way? Yeah, a lot of people won't. I don't think so. I mean, the clown's parents, I guess? Clowns don't have parents. Yeah, they're made in labs. feelings and doesn't want to see a human die. I don't, they're not human. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Racist. <laughs> I was, you know what? It's Let's go a, ahead and. Yeah, I don't know. It's scientist. Classic scientist. Classic scientist. <laughs> Hating on the less fortunate in this case, which are clowns. Hey, most clowns have it better off than I do. <laughs> All right. It's probably most. True. Most. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's most likely true, yes. <laughs> I mean, maybe a handful. You know what? I'm really not into the uh, underground clown scene. Yeah. Name so, one uh, unsuccessful clown. Yeah. I bet you can't. <laughs> I, you're right. I can't. I can't name a single unsuccessful clown. You don't see clowns what homeless. That's true. <laughs> you're, yeah, I huh? guess. Well, you do see hobo clowns, though. Yeah, but they're looking. They're not clown hobos. How do you know? Because they're performing <laughs> at parties. How do you know? Yeah, for... Beer money. <laughs> Are you more into the underground uh, clown scene than I am? Yeah. <laughs> He's been there. That's how he knows they're all better off than him. Yeah. He got shunned out of it. Classic scientist. Again. <laughs> anyway, Tiny Tina, she basically, we do that thing again where it's like. Do a bunch of stuff for me. Yeah, exactly. I'll help you out if you do a bunch of stuff for me. And, yeah, then you eventually blow up the train track and it ta- knocks the train off the rails and you go and try and get the vault key from the train. And you get to where the train fell off the track and you're jumped by Jack's, I guess, super robot, Wilhelm. Yeah. I love how Angel's like, well, the key's not there because Jack would have sent Wilhelm to. <gasps> yeah, oh no. my god! <laughs> yep. And I don't remember Wilhelm being that bad of a boss to fight. No, no, he just had those shield and the regenerating yeah. health or something. I played Wilhelm in the pre-sequel. He's pretty awesome. Wolf and Saint were the surveyors he had flying around him. Yeah, he has a cool weapon. No, it's not cool. I don't remember what it was. I don't know, some type of Hyperion little glob yeah. thrower. But the vault key wasn't on the train, and it was just a trap to try and get Wilhelm to kill you. But uh, you kicked his ass anyway, but you did find a power core there, didn't yes. you? It's funny because every time in my notes I have written H.J. instead of Handsome Jack. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I have nice. got a new power core, and H.J. is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Ah, oh, toilet humor. We are not above it. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone's like, hey, that power core looks awesome. Let's yeah, jam that in. We the- never have to worry about recharging it or anything. Shield generator. Yeah, everyone's really excited about this new power core. Yeah, so you put the new power core in, and it was a trap. It ah, no. gave Angel, the voice who's been talking to you, control of everything, and she lowers the shields, and the Hyperion satellite starts sh- moonshotting Sanctuary. So... Scooter and Roland and Lilith run around trying to get things, and they eventually lift Sanctuary off the ground, and Lilith transports it out of the way. See, that's what I'm saying. She knows exactly what she's doing. Yeah, I know. She moves the whole thing, but she can't move you more than I like how she she pushes you outside. Yeah. Here, just go over there and watch it, because it's going to be cool looking. What was her excuse for that? Oops. Oh, okay. And it makes a big hole in the ground, which is a whole bunch of optional quests in the ground underneath. But where you find Oh, some that's o- right. That's it's like a whole other area. Yeah, you find some awesome weapons down there, too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Turtle Shield. What the fuck is it called? Fabled Tortoise. Yeah. And nice. The, and there's a Dark Souls. Uh, oh, yeah, that Dark Souls section. Easter egg. That was pretty cool. And the Minecraft section. And that was this is the area where, uh, well, this is the point in the story where Jack says, yeah, this was my plan. It's been the plan for the last five years. Yeah, I got those suckers to get the vault key for me, and I stole it from Tannis. Yeah, so his plan was to get Wilhelm killed. I guess, yeah. That's silly. He's Jack. He's 
arrogant and pompous. <laughs> Five steps ahead. He's yep. playing 3D checkers. <laughs> well, he probably thought that Wilhelm could kill them. Yeah. Or and, at least he had a backup I, plan yeah. if he didn't. The worst yeah. the worst case scenario is Wilhelm dies and he gets the power core. True. Okay. But after Sanctuary teleports away, uh, the AI angel tells you to go through the fridge to the highlands. So you can fast travel back. So you can, so yeah, so you can get to the, where she, that's where Sanctuary is going to appear. So you can work your way there. And I guess you still trust Angel because she's trying to. Well, yeah, this is where she tells you, like, I have the key. Yeah. Come to me. This is what you got to do. Trying to gain your trust back. Yeah, I don't, and it, basically the whole thing with Angel I thought was a little suspicious because she just tried to kill you and then all of a sudden you guys all just trust her again. But they they pass it off as like, well, that is the best lead we got. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Roland says. Well, yeah, because she fools them in the first one opening up the, the vault. But he's like, well. What she's saying seems nearly impossible, so it doesn't seem. Well, that, like that comes up later. But. Yeah. So you work your way through a whole bunch of maps through the fridge, which is another great place, the place I hated the most, probably. Oh yeah, those little thieves and shit. Yeah, the little thieves, and it's full of racks and crystalisks. <laughs> yeah, and it's a pain in the oh, ass. Oh yeah. Pain in the ass. Yeah, I I remember that, and it's all like tunnels, and then you open to different areas, and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the ass, and. I forgot all about those little fucking thieves that would like steal your loot and run away. <laughs> yeah. Steal a whole bunch of money. Yeah, those guys are awesome. You should be able to play as one of them. A rat? Yeah. And you work your way through to the highlands, which is a huge area. Goes through a bunch of things. Mm hmm. And you have to steal a signal from Hyperion to re- uh, recreate an uplink to the sanctuary fast travel. Which is now? Go ahead. I remember this part being a huge yeah. pain in the ass. Well, st- stealing the uplink is a pain in the ass, and overlook when you have to defend it is a pain in the ass. Yeah, like I remember, um, they had the uplink, and then a uh, one of the worm things took it and ran away. Yeah, and then you had to go find that boss and then kill that. And I remember having to like cheese that, like having to hide behind <laughs> a building because I could not beat it any other way. Yeah, when you have to stand there for the uplink, and if you're playing one player, yeah, every time you die, it restarts. Oh my god! And there's badass so loaders and surveyors flying all around. It's really annoying. And like barely anywhere to hide. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's just coming at you in that middle open area. It was a pain in the ass. Sure was. But eventually, like as soon as I saw it in the cutscene video, I was like, "Oh, this fucking part!" <laughs> yeah, I almost like, stopped. I got the video. mad again. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years later. <laughs> Getting. Eventually, win that fight and re- recreate the fast travel station in Sanctuary, and you travel back to Sanctuary where you and Roland and Lilith and is Mordecai there? No, Mordecai's at the game preserve. I think that's right. Well, they they start hatching a plan to get to Lilith or get to Angel. Well, Handsome Jack and Angel tells. This is where they're all kind of skeptical of Angel until she sell, tells them that she's in Thousand Cuts and there's, she's protected by three things they have to get through. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah. And she has, you have to go through a death wall, which we'll talk about, and then get through a bunker and then open a door that can only be opened by Handsome Jack. And once you figure out how to get through all of those, you should be able to save her. And no matter what you do, don't let Lilith follow, come in there. So to get through the death wall... They hatch a plan to upgrade because it only lets Hyperion robots through. And since Claptrap is a Hyperion robot, you decide you got to steal an upgrade for him so he can get through and fight your way through. So your first, I guess, mission to solve these problems is to go to the game preserve and talk to Mordecai because he, he has, has the upgrade. upgrade. That's what Gotcha. That makes sense. And then you travel through the whole fucking game preserve. Yeah. Just to get to... Well, you, you get there, and they, oh. he says that Bloodwing was captured, and the upgrade is on Bloodwing's collar. That's when you have to go through the... Yeah, so you travel through the annoying game preserve. I, I was going to say, I think I remember that being annoying, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember those fucking invisible assholes. Stalkers. Everywhere. Yeah. Stalkers, yeah. 
Yeah. Just everywhere. And then they had another like tower defense uh, or another horde mode. Oh, it, it happens a million times in this. Wasn't yeah, like it was their special. There was, there was Pimone and Tumba. That's what it was. Yeah. They have, oh, what did Pimone had the shotgun that the TDR shotgun that you threw and it would fly around shooting things. Yeah. Deliverance, I think it was I don't called. Remember. And there was a shield or something. There was, yeah, I think it was a it was a shield that Tumba had. Man, the weird shit that you remember from this game. <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. <laughs> so you fight your way all through that, and uh, you get to where Bloodwing was held, and he's not there. So you fight your way through more of the game preserve, and you get to the end, and Jack reveals that he's been doing experiments on Bloodwing, and they show Bloodwing has become mutated by slag. And it's a huge thing, and yep. it's a boss fight against Bloodwing. Which, being for someone who had played the game through as, oh my god, uh, as him the first time, like this is this is pretty rough. Yeah, yeah it's it a was. it's a terrible moment because you try and save Bloodwing, and he gets tranked by Mordecai, and you get the upgrade off of his chest, and then Jack kills him with an explosion. <laughs> Yeah, I love how Jack's fucking hinting at it the whole time. Yeah, I, I can't remember what that last element yeah. is. It's like, wait, corrosive, electric? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, explosive. But you get the upgrade, and Bloodwing dies, and Mordecai go, kind of goes into rage mode. Oh, yeah, when you're running out, he's just sniping everything. Yeah, you that don't was, even have to fight any that more was enemies. so cool. <laughs> Which, why didn't he do that all the time? Yeah. But, Whatever. And you get the upgrade to Claptrap, and you go and give Claptrap the upgrade, and he turns invisible for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm not exactly sure why. If he was the last Claptrap, why were there upgrades? It's just a Hyperion upgrade, I think. Oh, just like a yeah. Mac OS. Just a random yeah. Yeah, Mac OS. <laughs> they went up to like Snow Leopard now on <laughs> Claptrap. I got gotcha. you. But uh, yeah. Where do we go from here after you finally fucking get well, through this? Well, then Roland says... That he knows someone who can help him get through the bunker. And it's the Slab King and Thousand Cuts. So you go and have to meet him. Which is another annoying <laughs> place to go through. I didn't think that was that bad. A thousand Cuts? Yeah, couldn't you just always mutate the the raging guys and they could just run around? Ah, you him? could. Yeah. yeah. Slow, but it was fun to watch. I, I vaguely remember like the small, like the uh, the lower bowl area. Where the bandits were like had their living quarters or whatever. I remember that being a lot harder than the whole rest of it. Yeah, because it's always that's kind of a place where they always you think you killed everybody and then you take a step forward and there's guys walking out doors behind you. Yeah, yeah. It was a good. I remember going there a lot to just level up. Yeah, there's a lot of enemies to fight, but you work your way through and then the Slab King sends a whole several more horde waves at you that you have to fight off, and then after you beat them all. He reveals the Slab King was Brick from the first game. Get the fuck out. Yep. The final and fourth <laughs> yeah. character is fine. Who is there. super duper totally fine with you killing all his boys. Yeah, it's kind of he's not a Crimson Raider anymore because he's Yeah, because he's okay with killing everybody. Like literally everybody. Yeah. yeah. Does not apparently matter at all. It's like Roland him. kicked him out or something? Yeah. Because he didn't like his methods. I, yeah, I think Brick says in this part he's like it's all right. You killed a bunch of them. They're stupid. I kill them too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> or something crazy like that. And then he says something like, oh, yeah, by the way, They'll still um, attack if you, you come back to the area, they're going to they're gonna attack you again. Yeah. Like, uh, the, what kind of leader are you that's like... Yeah, you can't stop them. But he, uh, yeah, like, hey, guys, knock it off. This guy's cool. He says he'll send buzzards to help you get through the bunker. Yeah. So that's the second thing done. Oh. Uh, this was my favorite character, though. The sarcastic slab. Oh. <laughs> he just comes out slow oh, clapping. Yeah. He's like, yay. Good job. Good job. <laughs> and there's also, it's also the place where you get the just shoot me in the face quest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy's awesome, too. Just shoot me in the face! <laughs> it's just a psycho screaming for you to shoot you in the face, and then the mission thing pops up, and it's like, I guess shoot him in the face? <laughs> <laughs> And then you do it, and the mission ends, and it's like, well, then doesn't the like flavor text or whatever say, "Well, that was easy" or yeah. something like yeah. that? That was pretty good. Yeah, I think there's a trophy that comes with it. Yeah, classic Borderlands humor. But then you go return to Sanctuary, where you come up with a plan to get through the third hurdle, and it's to steal a bioscan module from one of 
Handsome Jack's clones, I guess, and to mimic his voice so he can get through the door at the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this whole section. I forgot all about this section. And Opportunity, opportunity? is a place you don't want to forget because it's probably the worst part in the game. It's fucking hard. Just full of badass loaders and surveyors and engineers throwing turrets down and shit. It's really a pain in the ass. I remember there being like a, a whole bunch of robots you had to kill, not just in this area, but in a lot of areas, but only like four different types of robots you ever fought. Yeah, you fought exploders and bulk loaders, gun, gun loaders. loaders. War loaders. Yeah. Badass loaders. Yeah, I guess there were more than... Well, they're all loaders. Yeah, they're all loaders. I just remember that being annoying where it's like, oh, more robots yeah. that look pretty similar. Yeah. Oh, they all look almost exactly the same. But I still still went back and played through it like nine times. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a great game. Had to. I mean, yeah. I don't remember if there was any good weapons in Opportunity. Nothing... Nothing sticks out. out like... No. I went back and farmed it. No, I can't remember either. I probably, if there was a good one, I probably didn't want to do it because opportunity was a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. There is a elemental Nova shield called Black Hole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the only one that pops up from Foreman Jasper. Yeah, that was a pain. Uh, yeah, and he's all the way on the other side of the map, so you had to yeah. fight through everything to get to him. But anyway, after you do all that, you get the bio scan, you mimic Jack's voice, you launch your assault on the bunker to try and get to Angel. Which is... Is this when you're trying to get into the bunker, you run into bunker? Yes. Well, you use Claptrap and go through the gate. He lowers it for you. And then you fight your way all the way up to the thing. And then he's like, oh, yeah, bunker's a big flying th- machine. Yeah, so he's like, the bunker's not a place. Yeah. And then... Oh, I, before you get too far into it, I remember this being the area where Jack tells you the story of how he got the vault key. Yeah. And he's like... Basically, the they, him and Wilhelm just beat the shit out of Tannis, yeah. Oh. Which is why I guess she's a little off. Well, we forgot to talk about Tannis, too. She's also in Sanctuary. She wasn't in the cut scene movie, really. No, she doesn't really have any... She has no main storylines, story yeah. She was more in the first one than this one. I mean, she still has a shitload of side missions, but yeah. it's not like... Yeah. Not nearly she's as been, like the resident important, I guess. scientist, vault expert, I guess. Anyway... You fight your way up to Bunker, and then you have to fight the Bunker. Which is, eh, that wasn't that bad of a boss. No, I, no, I fought no. the Bunker so many times. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't remember why. The bitch? To try to get the bitch. It never, it, does he drop the sham, too? Yeah, he drops he the sham. He does drop the sham. How do you fucking remember all of these? Jesus. And he drops a, a super rare face. Yeah, yeah. And I never got it. Pissed me off. But the sham was a great shield. I used it a lot. Which one was that? It's it. It's like a. It's an absorb shield, but it has a super high absorb chance, like seventy five percent. Oh yeah, it was like every other bullet you yeah. absorbed. Yeah. And Trump slap wins. Woo! Bullshit. That wins not bull- bullshit. You, you know, know the it. rules. You know the rule. And I fucking want That's bullshit. Oh, I'm out of here. I'm done with this podcast. What? Uh, say, hey, oh, hey, hey, guys. Uh, what are you? Uh, we didn't see you come back. We were kind of bullshit. <laughs> distracted with a uh, Pen game. race. Who? But how about that game, huh? How about Borderlands 2 it was the at best game number we covered one? In 2019. The best Still game. Still top five, maybe ten in my life. Yeah, it's up there. Of games ever? Yeah. It's the highest rated game. I think it's the highest score I gave a game, and it's. That's easily the highest, I think, the best game we covered. Yeah. I feel like if I were to sit down and make my favorite games ever list, I feel like it wouldn't be in the top 20, but I feel like that's really not fair. Because well, I played what, it. What 20 games have you played that no, were better than that? It's just I played it so much. Like it, the thought of playing it again right now makes me <laughs> sick. Because I played through the game 700 times. Exactly why you should. I know, it's, but that's the thing. Like I, It wouldn't come to your mind as top 20? No. But there had to be a reason I played it so goddamn much, yeah. right? So I'd say looking back, it's probably top five for me. I'd, I'd probably stick it in the top ten. If not sure. top five, top ten. Yeah, easy. Top, top ten. ten. Yeah, it is. But every time I think about playing it, like right now, I still feel. I don't want to play it ever again. Yeah, <laughs> but I played it. I got my money out of that shit. I literally for just sure. played through the whole game again before Borderlands Three came out yeah, and all the DLC. Exactly. It kind of made me nauseous. Oh Jesus Christ! But uh, great game. Yeah, yeah, great game. And I really liked all that stuff we just talked about in it. Oh. Yeah. Brings me I back. Wish, I wish we could have had longer. Yep. <laughs> exactly. 
Exactly. So, uh, what do you guys foresee happening in 2020? Any uh, any games you see on the horizon you might want to do? Maybe tease it a little bit, something like that. Death Stranding. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> we did that already. <laughs> more Nintendo games. Yeah, definitely. We need to get more Nintendo games. Start in here. series and stuff. I would love Ooh, to. I'm do... thinking of throwing a Fallout in there, maybe. The first That'd one. Be one. That'd be interesting. Maybe. Yeah. Like the first first one. Fallout yeah, one. I never played yeah, it. Like so. the PC version. I've done a little bit of research trying to find videos on that. But interesting, interesting. I mean, that'd be a good pick. That's a great universe to get into. Uh, I would love to do more or any. We never got, even got to like the Sega generation. Oh, we, there's yeah. a lot of stuff we didn't do because we only did like 50 games. Yeah, That's true. we might do like Die Hard Trilogy Part Two. <laughs> yeah, we might. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I'll be trying to get you guys to do it for a while. <laughs> Yeah, the stuff and not a scotchy, that's for sure. Maybe how to survive. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm still yeah, looking yeah. for a video on that one. <laughs> Dude, I got some fucking scotchies in the bank I could bring. I think Man vs. Wild was a scotchy. There's a story in that? Yeah. Get well, the fuck out. Dude, I just remember I did get the numb, not bragging. But I got, that sounds, <laughs> like, sounds brag. like a brag. There was definitely <laughs> Two to one. It's definitely a brag. Non humble brag. <laughs> <laughs> There's a part where. You're in the Don't f- ruin it for us. We'll, right. we'll, we'll cover uh, it. Oh, yeah, we might go to so it. So fucking we don't know. stupid. We I got to check if there's know. even a video for it. There has to be, right? Yeah, there's a video for everything. Gamers Little Pro- Playground gets them all for us. Yeah. Shout out to Gamers Little Playground. Always and forever. We're going to need you in 2020. That's yeah, for I sure. I love you guys. I mean, you get enough views I, on YouTube. I purposely avoid their videos because I know you two watch them, so I try and watch something else. They have the most concise and full videos. Yeah. And it's always like enough gameplay. It yeah, to just make a little. Sense. Just to like watch. It's a little bit. So you know what's well, going on. Yeah, I always yeah. watch the speedrun anyway. So Yeah, true. And Call of Duty was a boring ass speedrun to watch. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible speedrun. <laughs> I was on in the background while I played Borderlands. But do they, don't they usually uh, skip through cutscenes? Cutscenes? Yeah, but it doesn't make the game shorter most of the time. No, because you watch the cutscene movie and then yeah. you watch the speedrun. So. And. Uh, Call of Duty, I pretty much knew how the game was played anyway, so watching the speed run was kind of pointless. But Yeah, it's just pretty much I saw a lot of the dogs. One way there. to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see any cutscene movies for Man vs. Wild the game. I'll have to dig deeper. Yeah. I mean, you don't find them all right away. No, there was definitely no I, there's a moment where a bear attacks. No way. Yeah, and you have to like slam a bear grills. <laughs> you have to <laughs> slam a piece of wood against a tree stump to make a loud noise and then the bear runs away. I don't think that would work. It maybe, does work. Maybe for a brown bear. I don't fucking know. Yeah, not, he didn't say grizzly or polar. Yeah, dummy, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so check out for that. There's going to be other scotchies. Sco- I got scotchies on scotchies on scotchies. That's why I got to pick decent games because I can't stand doing scotchies all the time. <laughs> I know, and that's why I got to make slappers. <laughs> yeah. Slappers are kind of like scotchies, but actually fun. Scotchies can just be yeah. Painful. I know it's so hard. It's a fine line. There it really <laughs> there is. is a fine line. There's an art to it. I mean, that's what we are. We're curators. Yes, us. I do feel a little left out that there's not a name for. I know. That. I can't even think of you one. Can't that even would think make of anything. Yeah. Sciency. Yeah. No. It doesn't work. Well, let's say someone had a really good idea of what we would call the types of game scientist picks, and they wanted to send us an email about it. I'd be glad to hear it. Where would they send it though? <laughs> They'd probably just send it to <laughs> plottytime at gmail Perfect, perfect. And if they wanted to get to us on the socials, where they're doing that, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram and Twitter. Perfect. That does it for us. That does it for our top episodes of 2019. See you in 2020. We'll see all you fucks in those episodes. It's been a good year, guys. Don't trust white people. Never. Peace. Peace. Peace.